I gotta do some calisthenics, gotta do some stretching. All right. Good morning, guys. How you doing? This is Travis P. Love, and welcome back to Caliber Corner, episode number 60. Uh, today, we're going to talk about, uh, let's see here, everyday carry, range, and vehicle trauma kits, as well as some home trauma kits. Uh, what do you need? What don't you need? Do you actually need one? All right. And then after that, we're going to talk about 45 ACP and 40 Smith. Are they still relevant rounds? Or are there something, or should you give up the capacity, uh, you know, for what you think might be a more powerful round than, say, 9 millimeters, some of the other rounds out there? And then finally, we'll talk about everyday carrying your own hand-loaded ammunition. Is that something you should do? Is it smart? Is it not smart? Okay, what do you think you should do? So these are all viewer requested topics. That's where stuff's going to come from here on out until I run out of topics. Uh, if you ever want to, you guys can email me at thecalibercorner at gmail.com. The link it should be in this video down below uh, once this video is posted on YouTube. And you guys can feel free to email me anytime. So let's go and get started. Uh, we're going to let the panel introduce themselves, and then we'll take attendance because we've got a few people showing up late over there. Morning to you, Live Moon. And uh, Tony, we'll start off with you. What is new in your world, brother? He's warming up. He's thinking. All right, Tony, we'll come back to you in a second, man. Squib, what's new in your world, man? How you doing? So I'd like to thank you for the pumpkin spice reference last Saturday. Sure. Yeah. Two Saturdays in a row, or two weekends in a row, I should say. Two weekends in a row, I stopped at the local gas station and got a pumpkin spice latte. Anybody oh, who man. knows me knows I'm not a pumpkin spice latte kind of guy, but... It's just like the whole, when you talked about the PBR, and then I ordered a PBR at the, uh, when I was at um, uh, a wedding reception, they had an oh. open bar, you know. <laughs> Wasn't it refreshing, like, though? Wasn't it nice to go back to just cold, domestic, cheap, you know? Wasn't it nice? Well, yeah, and, and the pumpkin spice latte isn't bad, uh, no, but the whole thing is you're using latte. that. Yeah. Are we talking from the cappuccino machine, like you just push the button and dispenses? Are you talking like a real latte with it? The barista making the espresso and the cream. No, no, I'm talking about a Speedway gas station all right, all right, pumpkin all right. spice machine lot. Yeah, but here's the oh. thing. You're using that old Travi mind trick on me, and it's just, you know. Mind <sighs> trick? What mind trick? There is no mind trick. No, that's just there is no mind trick. Uh, so, Squib, where can somebody find you if they want to watch more of your content? Where can, where can Squib be found? Uh, I'm on YouTube. I'm not on all the media things like you. It's just too complicated for me. But uh, okay. Okay. I'm on YouTube. I've got a channel, Squib Load, two separate words. It's really kind of lame. Uh, with lame videos, it's not all gun related. Uh, I'm a normal guy. I do stuff other than just guns. And uh, I don't know. Uh, I try to weasel in on shows like this all week long. So last night I was on Budget Guns and Gear Review. And uh, this morning I'm here, Monday night at uh, 11 Eastern. I'll be on Lock and Load. So, you know, just weaseling in. Thanks. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Tony said he'd be right back on the internal chat. So we'll go ahead and move on to Sandhill Shooter. Sandhills, what's going on, brother? How you doing, man? Good morning. Thanks for the invite. Glad to be here. All right. So you're going to be around? You heading off to work this morning? What's going on today? Uh, no, no work today again. It's been a, good, it, I've good. got the whole, well, I don't have the whole weekend off. I've got to, I've got to leave town to go to do the other job about noon. Oh yeah. I'm here, I'm here this morning. All right, man. Cool, cool, cool. So Sandhills, uh, content, man, what can we expect to find if we go check out your channel? What's going on over there? What do you got going All on? All right. The plan, <clears throat> the plan is still on for 2A Tuesday. This Tuesday, October 2nd, yep. nine o'clock central time, the only time zone that matters. And uh, because it is the second of October, we're going to kick the uh, kick the show off with an every second matters chat. I don't know exactly what aspects we're going to cover on that yet. Um, the way that I typically do things is I kind of have a vague outline in my head, a vague notion of uh, kind of where we're going to let the let the conversation start, and then we just kind of see where it goes. Sweet, good deal, good deal. Yeah, that'll be an awesome show, man. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be awesome. It's finally going to happen. So. Cool, cool, cool. Well, thanks for joining us this morning, man. I do appreciate it. Anybody who wants a link, go ahead and email me at sandhillshooter at <laughs> email.com and uh, give me your email address if I haven't already got it, yep. just so that I can send some links out on Tuesday. And I will try to get that up and running and get the links out before hit or miss is over. Um, I'm planning on being on hit or miss, at least in the beginning. I'll probably have to duck out early to get mine going. But Tuesday night's yeah. 9 o'clock. Two nights at nine o'clock, but not the right nine o'clock. No, even <laughs> it's the right nine o'clock. You're just 
misinformed. Oh. You know, it's like you're always struggling to catch up to us. No, we're at the middle. Everything is based around us. We're at the center. You guys revolve around us. What don't you understand? We're in the middle. And you guys have to adjust to us. You look to us. Like, like, like in all the great empires of the world, the main city was always in the center. And everything radiated outward. I mean, you can't argue that. You're, you know? you're telling me on Y2K you didn't call your friends in the Eastern time zone just to make sure everything was okay at midnight. Uh, no, we didn't care. I didn't we have any friends. We were first. Actually, we were first. Actually, we were first. <clears throat> we were first. I, I yeah, remember watching the news because they featured Australia and they were talking about a few cash registers having some problems and then life went on and then everybody was yeah. fine. And then I think we would sit around and watch the Matrix at 1 a.m. or something. I don't know. <laughs> Here, here's what happened. Here's, here's what happened was that uh, uh, not only do we not have any friends at that point in the Eastern time zone, <laughs> but we only, cared, we only cared about the Central time zone because that's the only time zone that really matters. So mm -hmm. what you're saying is you were friend deficient until you got on YouTube. I mean, back then we didn't have we didn't, back then we didn't have electricity or debit card machines or we had horses and windmills. We didn't really care. It didn't affect us. All of our handguns were Libra action anyway. So you know, we we had we had no no reliance upon modern machine or man. You know, but we're better now. We have electricity now, which is you can tell. So yeah, yeah, tell me. All right, so let's move on. All right, so Mr. Matt, what's going on, man? What what can we find on your channels? What's going on? What's new? <laughs> And, and oh, have you recovered from last night's uh, no, bender no, of four no. hours of video gaming? I know I'm still a little slow today. And drinking. Don't forget the drinking. I didn't stop uh, drinking the whole time. So good God. That's so the main thing recovered from. Oh wait, guys, you need to check out Matt's uh, well, Friday night. What do we call it? The strudel. The German strudel gameplay. Yes, yes. Where Link Link pulled off a heroic act last night. Link oh, single-handedly killed seventy-eight zombies. And saved us all. <laughs> it was epically amazing. So, oh man, I don't know. So, so Matt, what can we find on your channel? What kind of content is out there? You got two different channels. What are they? What do we got? Uh, yeah, well, Never Enough Ammo and Mr. Matt. Mm -hmm. And yeah, mm -hmm. it's a lot of fun. Oh, especially when you get your live privileges taken away because YouTube is a dick. <laughs> Have they ever gotten back with you since then, <laughs> since your conversation? No, they basically, the last, the last guy I talked to basically yeah. just said, you're just going to have to wait 90 days till the content claim. It's like arguing with the history. They don't think logic. Copyright you know? claim. Which, it, by the way, is there's no copyright claim on my channel, which is what's funny. Because <laughs> I can go, you, you know, you can go on your channel and see where you have copyright claims. And there's not yeah. one on my channel right now. <laughs> it says I have zero, but yet I still can't run the live chat for 90 days for some reason because John said so. So everything. It's like flip the switch when you call them up. Oh, yeah, you're right. Boop. Oh, you're going to lose 90 days. You know, it's like, they yeah, just it's have like, oh, okay. <laughs> thanks. Sure. This is yeah, insane, appreciate dude. Appreciate it. This is so, this but that's why I have the that's why I have the second channel to do the live shows. Over oh yeah, there, so. oh yeah, oh yeah. I got a fact. I got a video. I think I'll probably post it today. So, over on the uh, on Never Enough Ammo. So, have they ever said to you, you in the hole for ninety days? <laughs> it feels that's like pretty it. much what it is. That's pretty much what it is. So, oh gosh, yes, yes, yes. All right. So, thanks for joining us this morning, Mr. Matt. I do appreciate it. You got to run off to work today at all or not? No, I don't think so. Unless one of my guys calls and needs help out in the field somewhere, but I've already. Been in contact with them this morning, and so far they're like, "No, we're good, dude." So hopefully it stays that way, and I don't have to leave the house today. That's a good thing to hear. That's a good thing to hear. Awesome. Okay. Well, moving on down the line, Jim, how you doing, Jim? What's going on, buddy? Oh, hanging in there. So I mean, the the tiles, the tiles. What is the tiling done? Because you've had all this free time now to jump in our podcasts, and is the tiling done in the house? Heck no. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Just... It'll, it'll get done. It'll get done sometime in the next six months. Oh, there we go. All right. All right. Cool. Cool. Uh, hey, in terms of firearms, you looking at anything new or are you checking anything out? Were you pursuing an AR or an AK or anything else? What, what are we looking at? Hunting rifle? Oh, gosh. What's, what's on the list for you? What's, what's on the wish list this year? It's wide <laughs> open. The, the wish list? Oh. <laughs> yeah. What do, you, what do you see you picking yourself up in the immediate future? Any good? I'm leaning towards either an AR or an AK pistol. Okay. Cool. That's 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 what I'm leaning towards. You know, if you look Go over, AK. Go AK. Oh man, they're getting expensive though, Matt. You got one of the best deals on one. I'm looking at those Krinkovs or whatever. I mean, and these these things are going for six, seven hundred dollars now. Oh yeah. I'm myself yeah. Not picking no, up I, I, four ninety nine with the brace. You know, the, the the reason I bought that was simply because it was such a good deal, even at the time. Yeah, it's an even better deal now. Oh, know? I know, I know, definitely. So definitely. It, at the time, I ran, I just randomly ran across it. You know. I mean, Jesus, for for what what I think I paid five something for five, 
526 or something like that. And it came with yeah. the brakes, it came with the extra muzzle brake, it came with three mags, everything. And at the time, they were selling for over 600 bucks. I was like, I wouldn't even plan on buying. I was going to buy one of those PSA builds uh, yeah, for the AKs. I've seen, and, uh, what do you got? Mini, Mini Draco right now over on Classic for 600 without the brace. Yeah, I want the Micro Draco. I've shot that one-handed, and it don't have no kick. You would think it would have this massive kick, but it don't. I'm seeing oh, 622 nice, for yeah. an NPAP, for an M92 PV, uh, Yugo PAP. I mean, you got a, you got a heck of a deal on that because they're only going to go up in price. I mean, you can't even touch one of these now for under – Barely under six hundred dollars, and even then, you don't get the uh, the SB brace, which is what another hundred fifty dollars for it or yeah. something. I don't know what that is the is. older brace. And these older braces, yeah. the Gen One brace, they don't sell for as much money anymore. They're like I don't know, maybe seventy bucks or something like that. Yeah. Probably new. Um, the newer ones are selling for over a hundred because uh, those are the big chunky ones that mm -hmm. nobody really. I mean, I still functional yeah. nonetheless, and it's still a yeah, good it thing. Yeah, it's a big yeah. chunkier looking one. I'd rather honestly, I'd rather have that. Uh, was it the uh, shockwave? The, uh, the oh, the blade shockwave, the CAC, blade the CAC shock yeah. blade, whatever. That they're, one. Okay, they're but, nice, but after about a hundred rounds, it starts to kind of eat into your shoulders. It's just rough plastic. You can't put any kind of a butt cap on yeah, that. You need to, I mean, yeah. it's fine. They work fine, but and that's just shooting the five five six. You mean your cheek, not your shoulder, right? Your cheek. Uh, yeah, my my my. <laughs> yeah, I've never actually been on camera doing it, so nobody can say that I've act I've gotten criticized for not shouldering it in a lot of my videos. Like, dude, you, why don't you shoulder that thing? So my one video I did, I was cover your the ass. military. I was using the Mac one, or they'll shoot from that angle where you can't tell it's not on their cheek, but you know it's on their shoulder, right? Uh, so that one, I, uh, side chat I, I see people one. say that all the time on, on videos. Well, why don't you just say shoulder? Why don't you just do it on camera? Why don't you? Just because I don't want to, just, want cover the to show up. <laughs> just cover your ass. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Everybody yeah. knows what's going on. Cover yeah. your ass. Okay. Don't do just don't yeah. be stupid. All right. That's all I'm saying. Oh, geez. Crazy stuff. All right. So moving on down the line here. So, so David, what's going on, man? You're back for is this number four already? Four podcast uh, with us? I think it might even be number five. Number five, man. That's an awesome winning streak. Jeez. All right, all right. So, so what's new in your world, man? I saw you did the uh, Patriot in the Dark challenge. Is that one of the videos you posted recently? I'm trying to catch yeah. up. There's so many new videos popping up these days. Yeah. Yeah, the Patriot in the Dark challenge was the latest video I posted. Uh, I'll put out probably one or two more this weekend. Uh, okay, so what is the Patriot in the Dark challenge? Because this channel is awesome. I mean, it is. It's so cool. I, I love the the takedowns and cleaning videos. What 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 exactly is the challenge? The, he he's challenging everybody to put a blindfold on and either do a field strip or do some type of uh, cleaning or you know some type of operation with a firearm, whether it be rifle or or a handgun. I, I I assume that maybe he even includes take it to the range and you know safely with friends and spotters try to shoot while blindfolded. I don't know about oh, that man. exactly. That'd be I, that would be that'd be fun. I just at my range I. I don't know if I'd want to do it. I wouldn't want to anger anybody like the range masters or the owners. You know, thinking, well, this isn't exactly something we want to see. But can we, can we just it is reality for some count? Super, with with supervision, it should be fine. What's that, Matt? Can we can we just accept Glocks don't count? They're too easy to take down. Well, ARs are not hard either. I mean, that's yeah, something so, you could do if you clean them enough. If you can I take down a Glock them, blindfolded. Them, that's yeah. not a, an accomplishment. <laughs> yeah, I want. I went with my security nine for that exact reason that it was easy to take down, and. Just to let everybody know, it's not easy. If you no. if you watch my video, it ran on kind of long, so I apologize about that. But it, it was an absolute train wreck. <laughs> if I if I do one, it's gonna be it'll be in real time the whole length of time. I'm gonna I'll probably just sit there. I would like to just take this apart and clean it and put it back together and do a regular cleaning video with it. But it's actually me blindfolded the whole time, so I might have to have the wife sit around in case I drop something. Huh? <laughs> be like, uh. but anyway. Um, no, man, but hey, I want to thank you for coming back to the channel. It's awesome to have you here. And uh, again, I think we got some fun topics for today, so it should be cool. So let's check out and see who's joining us over on the uh, gun channel side real quick. Refresh the chat on that side. G-Webs is over there. He was checking in with us nice and early. Good morning, G-Webs. Tony's over there, and Tony's here. Paper Plane Crash, Patrick, Jim, Patrick, and Fine Ape. And real quick, we'll go back to Tony. Tony, are you back with us, brother? Yes, I am. All right, so what's going on in your world, man? What is new? What are you doing these days, Tony? Um, score hunting. Hey, What's all right. On? Have you had good luck? Uh, yeah, I've had best luck this year. Uh, or it's been better than it has been for the past four or five years. 
And I was going to ask you, I know it might not necessarily matter, but what is your preferred round for that? Are you using like a mini mag? Are you using a stinger? Just a, high, a standard velocity? Golden bullets? What do you what do you shoot with? Actually, I'm using Remington 22 Golden Bullet Shorts. Huh? Okay. Okay, so why do you choose the short? Does it do a little bit less damage when you finally hit the game or what? Less noise. Ah, okay. Okay. Are you shooting out of an H&R uh, Rough Rider or what are you using? Uh, I use a Marlin 981 or Browning BL22. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. That'd be neat, man. I gotta, yeah, we got we got a lot of small game around here to go after too. Raccoons and squirrels and rabbits and all that fun stuff. So, all right. So Tony, um, what else you got going on? Anything anything going on with with the channels? Any updates at all on on early watch? Nope. Nothing new. Okay. Okay. Okay, well, the old episodes, I believe, are still up, so if you guys ever want to check out some awesome podcasts, go back and watch Early Watch. I mean, the topics are still relevant, even some of the politics aside might be getting a little bit dated, but everything else in the show is just awesome. So Early Watch is still out there if you want to check it out. Very Hopefully cool. We'll be back sometime soon, but yeah, I haven't talked to Jimmy in a couple of weeks at least. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Well, get her back up, and we'll get her going, so. All right, so... Because weekday mornings are freaking boring with nothing to do. If I, I know, I know. You ever go to Walmart during the during the week? It's just like you just walk around. It's quiet. There's nothing going on. There's there's nothing exciting. It's just you know, it's nobody out. Nothing to do, man. There's nothing on TV. It's Tony, I say you just to to I say you just fire it up solo, man. Just get it going. Yep, I ain't doing it. It's Jimmy's <sighs> show. All right, all right. I hear you. I hear. You. I respect that. All right, so let's go and check in real quick on the YouTube side and see who's with us. We got Codfish Killer out there. We got Foul Mouth Actual going on. Man, a lot of big crew out there. Jim's out there, and Jim is here too live with Blue Steel 44, brother. Samson 1. Oh, Blue Steel's already thrown out some recommendations for 45 and 40. We will check that out for sure. Uh, tacos and French Fries, good morning. Uh, let's see, who else is out there? Rich White, Rich White is with us. Uh, Fine Eight thirteen ninety three. Fifty Shades of FDE, good morning, sir. First chance he gets the oh was so who what huh all right let's see here uh Stephen Dawkins is out there with us also Grim nineties out there Midnight Range checking in on us of course Grim ninety I pack nine millimeter good morning sir hello from Vegas good morning from Vegas all right uh is that it Scott P seventy nine Vanessa Kitty and W B all right so um again these topics again they're all viewer requests so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off talking about EDC trauma kits vehicle trauma kits range slash slash Home trauma kits, you know, medical kits, and so on. Um, we're obviously going to be focusing on something that's going to help you treat a gunshot wound. Okay, so if you go do a Google search on this, there are countless companies that are trying to sell you these kits. And I did a lot of research on them, looking at all these different brands. And we'll do some screen sharing, and I'll just show you typically what's going to pop up, and then the panel can chime in and, and say whether or not you know this would be a good idea. A lot of them are including the same items, the same thing, but it's amazing the price difference between them even though they include the same five or six core items. Uh, what I'm also noticing is if you buy these items separately, you're gonna spend less money, okay? But if you want the fancy bag to put it in, if you want the tactical bag with the, you know, the, the Alice loops on it and stuff, you know, you're gonna spend another 50, 60, 70, $80. So you're just getting a lot of the same stuff. I mean, money-wise in terms of buying the items, if you got something to put it in, you're gonna save 40 or $50. I've noticed this on like five or six of these kits whether it was the EDC kit or whether it was the vehicle carry kit and so on. Um, so Squib, something we were talking about ahead of time was that, you know, Squib's got an, got an interesting opinion on this and I, and I have to agree with him on this. These items, these items are absolutely useless unless you get training for starters, right? But um, even then, you know, Squib, do you want to try, chime in on the training a little bit? What do you want to tell us about that? So I've had training in the military and I've had training as a civilian. Uh, I've, I've taken uh, the battlefield uh, first aid I think three times in the military, and then the job uh, or the career I used to have <laughs> for 20 years. I took it almost every year. Uh, they were they were sticklers about us, uh, you know, taking the training over and over again. I was on the crisis team and the safety team and all that other stuff, so it was kind of like part of my job. Uh, and over the years, I did see a few things change. I think that if you've had any of that training, whether it be for your job, like you're uh, an EMT, a firefighter, uh, law enforcement, or they do stuff at your work, that's, it's a good thing to take, especially if um, they're asking for volunteers and they're having trouble. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to do it. Don't be afraid to take some of the training. Uh, but I will say that 
whether you've had training in the military or as a civilian or both, whether you had training 40 years ago or you had training last week, I don't think you should invalidate one person's training over another. Meaning okay. that, you know, even though, uh, you know, they taught us stuff like put your buddy's organs on his chest and just stay there with him until he dies. Okay, they're not going to do that in civilian first aid training. Um, anything is better than nothing. One of the things that they tell you in the CPR training is if you forget a step, you know, tilt the chin and pinch the nose and listen for breathe and all that stuff. You're, when you're panicking, your adrenaline's going and you're, you're stressed out, you might forget a step. And they say it's still better to do it and miss a step or screw up than to just do nothing because you may still save their life. And the same thing with some of the older training. Some of that older training saved somebody's life before. Maybe they found newer, newer methods that work better. But if you don't have uh, the more up-to-date information, doing something uh, that you were trained to do years ago will still work. But no matter how much money you spend on one of these fancy kits, if you don't know how to use it or you're unwilling to use it, if, if you're ever in that stressful moment, it's not going to do a whole lot of good. And there are some things that you can improvise if you have to in order to get by without one of these kits. It's good to have one. It's good to have it in your range bag. It's good to have it in your vehicle. It's good to have it in your home. And some of this stuff does expire. You need to periodically inspect it, look for uh, expiration dates on some of the things like the bandages and whatnot, and um, rotate it out. It's not a cheap cheap thing to maintain, especially if you have multiple kits. But I think some people get uh, put into a false sense of security because there's so many people out there in the industry selling training and selling merchandise, and it's a business to them. It's, yeah. and, and you can have somebody who has no idea what they're doing and go, hey, I bought this $30, I bought this $30 uh, uh, tourniquet. I'm all set. All right, do you even know how to apply a tourniquet? And I, you, know, you can get hit in the arm or the leg and bleed out. But they're going to have to hit you just right in order to bleed out. Otherwise, you can actually put pressure on that. You can hold, yeah. hold it down. And there are certain circumstances where putting a tourniquet on is not the first thing you do or the ideal thing to do. But I keep hearing all these people on YouTube jumping in. Tourniquet, tourniquet, tourniquet. Tourniquet don't work on a torso. It don't work on a neck. It don't work on a head. So just understand that just because you have a tourniquet, if you don't know how to use it or when to use it, it's really not going to be very effective. Uh, and if, you, if tourniquet's all you have, um, that's not really uh, the thing that you're going to be using the most. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another thing, too, with that is that um, if, if, you, if you can't handle the sight of blood, you can't handle, uh, you know, getting that stuff on you or any of that other stuff, uh, maybe having it is, is good if you can hand it off, off to somebody else who's, who's trained but I would imagine they're probably carrying a tourniquet too. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying you shouldn't get one, you shouldn't invest money in this stuff, but just know what you're doing before you get into it. Can yeah, we that, also point out that, that, yeah. that there are people that have lost limbs because people used a tourniquet improperly? You know, correct, Matt. Correct. So there's you got to be careful with that. Not everything requires a tourniquet. It's not just the movies where they just tear off a strip and tighten it. Or, yeah. You know, they're and, yeah. and they're done, and, and then you're you good for the three hours from the end of the or, movie. Yeah. You put one on wrong or leave it on too long or something like that. And, you know, somebody's getting something amputated later on. So, you, be you know, just because you get this little medical card that comes, because all these kits come with, you know, the, the immediate first aid responder card, or even get be able to read that thing when you're trying to treat somebody that's bleeding out. You even, are you even going to, you know, the adrenaline, can you even focus on it? You know, and so that is no substitute for, for medical training. I would say get some sort of emergency medical training. Myself, I'm actually going to be asking, uh, our high school administration, if they would offer some district-wide training for treating trauma victims in case there'd ever be any kind of a gunman situation and we would have to save somebody's life because we offer CPR training and, and a few other types of training, but, but nothing for emergency medical trauma. So, I mean, training is definitely something I know I'm lacking in myself. I've got the med kits, but I don't necessarily have the knowledge for anything severe, you know, say a gunshot wound. Um, I think that if you're going to be a person that goes to the range frequently, or you're somebody that hunts a lot, or you're into the shooting sports, sports and outdoors a lot, uh, it would be a good idea to have a serious trauma kit. And for me, at the range that I'm at, it is a 15-minute trip for the ambulance to get to the range. It, it, I mean, it takes me about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, just to even kind of get out to the road that I take to get to the range, because my range is actually out in the country. It's not far, but there's country roads, and there's traffic and stoplights, and there's all the turn. It would take, it says in our, it says in our, our registration form for the, the range that you're looking at a 15-minute trip, 
for an ambulance to get there. So you need to be prepared. They say you should have your own med kit. And I know this is awful. I don't know if they have one on site. If they do, I don't know where it's at. I should probably find out. But I have one in my vehicle in case I cut myself and get hit with something, you know, or whatever. Because you're looking at 15 and 15 minutes a person can die. So consider putting something together or getting yourself, you know, we spent all this money on guns and ammo and, and training and paper targets and this and that, you know, spend some money and get some good EMS training or some medical training you can use. Um, so what do you guys keep just in general? I don't have an EDC med kit on me. I mean, I'm not like, uh, was it Link, Matt, that had everything on him? He had like, <laughs> yeah. he had, he had like an entire, like a 55 piece. Uh, that dude has to have kit. like. He had like quick clot and he had like. Dude, like he's like got to wear like cargo, shirt, cargo pants everywhere with a fanny pack and a backpack just he's, to carry. I don't want to say he's got like a little mini nut and fancy, but without the attitude, you know. <laughs> he's, he is prepared. He has. I mean, he's, he showed every. We're like, okay, this guy's going to win the EDC hands down. You know, I've got like four band-aids and some chapstick. And, you know, some gauze and some duct tape, right? And this guy's got, you know, he could do a full-on organ transplant if he had to. But what do you guys keep, like, in your vehicle? What would be some of the stand, some of the some of the go-tos that you would keep? Do you guys have a trauma kit, say the tourniquet and the quick clot and all that stuff? You know, the, 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 the combat gauze and stuff? You guys have anything like that at all? Nope. No? Band-Aids. Band-Aids. I mean, I have just a standard med kit in my vehicle, but I have nothing real. I mean, I've got a good roadside med kit that I could use, but... But nothing that's got you know serious gear in it. What do you guys squib? Do you keep anything in your vehicle for stuff like that? Or sand hills? You guys want to chime in? I've got a surplus aircraft uh, first aid kit uh, that they keep on uh, like military transport helicopters. It's the same style that. Uh, well, actually, we had a couple different styles. We had the large ones, the small ones. I, I I've got one like what you can order uh, off the uh, surplus catalogs online. The mm -hmm. smaller one. It's expired. I know the stuff in there. I haven't looked in that thing in years. So okay. the, yeah, a lot of those, you know, like the creams and pills and stuff like that. Things might dry up. Not you just know, that, the bandages. Yeah. They're in yeah, paper, yeah. paper envelopes. Those, those envelopes start to peel, and then the bandages start to yellow and, and stuff like that. So I really need to unzip that thing and inventory it and replace some of the stuff. That's not going to be cheap. I finally put an IFAC in my range bag. The Hawaii Volcano Squad was telling me about this. Over a year ago, and I finally did it last month, I, I went ahead and um, did an updated IFAC. I took an old first aid kit, took the bag, and then I just dumped it out, and I started replacing the expired stuff. I started replacing the stuff that I just didn't think I'd use with stuff that I, I could use. Um, I had a hard time stuffing everything in there, but I, I got it in there. Something yeah. I've, I've added that I never had before is uh, Israeli bandage. Yeah, that's coming up in the chat over there a couple times now. That few people have mentioned that. Um, yeah. what, what is that? That wasn't, I mean, that that wasn't around, around when I was that. getting my when I was getting my battlefield first aid training. Those weren't around. I mean, at least not not here, um, not yeah. in the U.S. military. So, and then for the civilian first aid training, I don't think they've ever mentioned it in any of the uh, Red Cross classes <laughs> I've taken. But uh, I've got two different ones that I got off of Amazon, and th those do have expiration dates on there. But uh, those would probably be good for absorbing a whole lot of blood for, for a really deep wound that you're just trying to stabilize until the uh, EMTs can get there or until you can get somebody to an emergency room. Uh, something, uh, something else that you can use, a triangular bandage can be used as a tourniquet, as a bandage, or as a sling. So mm -hmm. that's something to keep in mind. I mean, you can unravel it and use it for different things. So. Yeah, yeah. So those are good things to have. Uh, Matt, did you go grab a little bit of gear to show off here? What do you got? What's in your Yeah, I, I just yeah. grabbed one that's next to me. I don't, I don't okay. even remember what all's in here, but I've got uh, one of the little triangular bandages. I've got some compressed gauze. I've got this thing, which I don't know what they're called. Um, they all have their own I little... I, I don't know if like, anybody knows that, what this bandage is. It's like for larger wounds. Um, it opens up, and you can press it, and it can like go around the torso a little bit and, and, and stuff, and... Uh, you know, I mean, just different stuff. I've got, you know, <laughs> I've got aspirin and shit in here and tape and a, uh, got a little, uh, where is it? Got a suture kit. Mm. I think this is the uh, number two suture kit. I have a scalpel in here. So that's good. I guess. <laughs> lots of gauze, lots of bandages. You got surgical um, shears? Uh, I do, actually. I've got a couple pairs, but they're in my main uh, kits. I don't have them in this one. This is the kit. The little trauma kit that I keep on um, my battle belt setup. 
Oh. So I've got a little trauma kit in there. Um, uh, so it's uh, yeah. My this is not my main one. Uh, I've got I've got a better one in my vehicle, and I got a better one in my uh, uh, the medical kit that I keep in the house. Um, this is just the one that's close to me. So that's the one I grabbed. And I got gloves. Of course, you need gloves. So yeah. Um, with the gloves, if you can get nitrile gloves, I recommend those over latex because if somebody's got a latex allergy. Yeah. Nitrile negates that, plus nitrile is more durable, so it's less likely to tear. I also recommend that you get larger gloves than what you need because they're, they easily tear, So, yeah. uh, it, or, or maybe keep two pair in there, maybe have one. I'm telling you what, I've ripped through I don't know how many pair because nobody keeps 2X. Uh, the, the other thing, too, is you mentioned tape. Um, I've had some people tell me that it's a bad idea. What I use is I use athletic tape. I use sport tape. Because that stuff will hold if you're yeah. wet, if you're sweaty. Blood is kind of, it's kind of funny. Blood is both sticky and slippery. Uh, but that stuff will, will hold together. And, you know, in an emergency room, they're going to cut off whatever it is. And they're, they're going to remove whatever's in the way. But I've had some people in first aid training tell me, don't use athletic tape. But I, per, I prefer that over the, um, the first aid tape because that stuff uh, just doesn't, it doesn't always stick in a, in a real high stress situation. <clears throat> Yeah, so you got all these different kits and all these options and all these things you can get. Don't forget, uh, maybe keep some sort of a, uh, I don't know if you want to keep like iodine or something like that, or or, or uh, like a triple antibiotic or some sort of a disinfectant also. Because if you have some sort of a cut wound or something scraping with, say, metal or whatever, you want to make sure you can do what you can to clean it out. Or maybe a, a bite of some sort, maybe you have to worry about rattlesnakes yeah. where you're at or something like one of the scorpions or something, you know. You can go over into the uh, health and beauty section of Walmart where they've got the first aid kits and the band-aids and the neosporin, and they do have the insect bite stuff, and yeah, they've yeah. got little surgical shears. They've got almost anything you need for a yeah. basic kit, uh, depending on what you what you want to get. With the um, with the you you know it might not also be a bad idea. I keep wet ones in there oh, yeah. uh, for cleaning up, not just uh, to try to, cl to clean the area, but to clean up afterward. Uh, I mean, it's not really. Um, they're not really meant for medical, but it does kill bacteria. Uh, if you can, you know, keep some hydrogen peroxide in a small spray bottle or some rubbing alcohol in a spray bottle. Extra gauze can be used to wipe down an area before you apply a bandage if you have extra gauze. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. There's something uh, else. There. Hey, uh, Matt, in your bag, do you have the Uma Thurman adrenaline shot? <laughs> Foul mouth actual is asking about that one. So Gorilla Glue. Uh, if you There's shoot some, burn cream, what else we have? Yeah. Somebody said a throw down gun, throw that in your bag too, in case you need it. Yeah. Uh, the burn morphine, cream, Falma said right. morphine. I don't think I can just go get that at Walmart, but you never know. <laughs> I think you can get the burn cream in, in the individual packets or individual wipes too, if you need to break it down and spread it out amongst kids. Yeah, and, ooh, uh, ooh, stuff, uh, stuff, alcohol stuff wipes like are a great thing too. Yes. Yes, they are. Uh, and those fine, those it, do dry up every so often too. Yeah. So you want to, when you inventory, you want to make sure that, uh, in addition to bandages and stuff like that, that you do change out the alcohol wipes. And uh, with the Neosporin and stuff like that, that's really not going to help if, if you're on the side of the road, but if you're out hiking or camping or something and you're not going to get back to civilization for a day or two or three, yeah, that comes in real handy. Uh, real quick, I just want to do a little screen share so we can just give people some ideas as to what we're talking about here. Again, you can look at the list of items that come and what we're going to show you here and buy these items separately. But what I notice is when you buy them all separately, because these some of these items are not cheap at all, um, you're going to spend about the same as you would if you get the kit that we're going to show you here. And again, none of these, I'm not endorsed by any of these companies. These are what pop up on a Google search. So this is what your average person is going to see. So let me do a little screen share for you. One of the most popular ones that I keep seeing pop up and I get ads from these guys all the time is uh, Dark Angel Medical. And can you guys see this? You all right? We're good to go? Yep. On the screen share. So we have the Everyday Carry Trauma Kit. It's 90 bucks. But again, if you price out the items, I think they come out to about 58 or $68. And you can just buy the bag. All these companies sell just the bag by themselves. They all have a lot of the same features on them, a lot of the same ideas and pockets and stuff. Now, that's 90 before you include uh, Quick Clot or I think it's Chido Cheeto Gaz XR Pro. Like, let's throw some Quick Clot in there. And then if you want, you can add a tourniquet to it. And that's going to jack the price in quite a bit. 120 if you throw a black soft TW tourniquet in there. And then there's a black Gen 7 Cat TQ tourniquet, which makes it also 119 So the prices go up $30 or $40. And again, they show you the items that you get in here. And so you can see exactly what you're buying if you wanted to go buy this on your own. 
part of it is you're buying that that convenience of having the kit all set to go right out of the box. And again, most of these products are all made in the USA from what I've seen. Uh, and then you got your medical supplies in here. So, you know, for 120 bucks, if you want to get something, I mean, they're, they all vary between 90 and 140. That's what I've seen at the different trauma kits that are out there. So this one tends to pop up first. I don't know. What's your guys, guys, what's your take on something like this? Would the person be better off just getting these items and putting them in just like a little plastic box? Or, I mean, granted, this one's designed to be carried on you. So say, Matt, this might be something, say, for a battle belt application or if you're going to be doing some sort of hunting trip, maybe you want to keep something like this on you. What do you guys think about this? Good idea, gimmick, bad idea? Well, my everyday driver is a fully stocked ambulance, so I think I've got Link beat. But, really? Uh, no. Okay, so, so you're, you're in the, I don't want you to give up too much personal info. Are you in the medical? You're in the medical field. No, no, that was a total joke. I, oh I, no, seriously, no, I had no idea. Just... Maybe you were an EMT or something. I was like, well, good. Let's get some. Let's get some ideas here about this stuff. Yeah. Now, as far as the kits go, I, yeah, I look at I look at that kit like any other kit. It depends on you. Like, there's a there's a basic first aid kit that I buy at Walmart. That's exactly what I want. So I buy that one. Uh, before I found it, I made my own kit. Like I'd go buy band aids. I'd go buy you know tweezers and everything that I wanted to put in it separately and put it in like some type of carrying case. Okay. And when I then when I found the one at Walmart, it had everything I wanted in it already. So I just started buying that one. And the same thing I would say with this the trauma kit. If it's got what you want in it, buy that. And then you can add to it as you go. But if it doesn't, then buy individual pieces and build your own kit. Okay. Yeah, I think you're definitely going to save some money um, if you uh, if you go get this stuff on your own. But, I mean, it just depends. If you just want to get that and then go take some classes and then kind of get, you know, just get something right. Because some people just, they don't know what to get or they want to get the right things. You know, a lot of people just buy these things. Obviously, they pop up, you know, in the top five or ten on a Google search. So there's a reason why these companies are making the money that they do. Um, and again, they might seem kind of expensive, but again, when you go price the items by themselves, it's, it isn't much difference in price versus what these companies are selling. And most of these companies are selling the bags separate and the bags are anywhere between like 40 and $80, uh, depending what you go with. Now, the, the, the bit of the, the philosophy that I've been taking with these kits is okay. You know, that kit looks cool. That, that looks like something that's going to do the job. Right. But let me go back to a screen share here. The one that really has been getting my attention is okay. So let's get something that's designed for you know the, the first responder or for the police officer for the emt so this is the north american rescue individual patrol officer kit with combat gauze 89.99 so it's a, it's the same base price as the uh what is it dark angel is that what that's called dark angel medical group okay so this one's 89.99 and i suppose the price is going to go up if you add a, add a bag so this is the officer patrol kit i'm thinking well okay if this is good enough for the police department for addressing trauma issues now it's not a standard med kit with you know, bandages and gauze and tape and all that fun stuff, then maybe this would be serious enough to to go with. So what's your thoughts on this, guys? Would this be something you consider going with something that's, you know, if it's, it's good enough for a patrol car, that would be good enough for the uh, the individual or not? What are your what's your take on this one? Well, I would think I would think that it would definitely have to go down to your individual choice once again. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you're like you mentioned earlier, you you have you know weakness to the sight of blood and different stuff like that, and you're not you don't handle trauma very easily. Then you probably don't want to get you know the Rambo field pack because yeah. you're not going to use it or you'll use it wrong. You know, yeah. a bunch of people on the panel already said if you do some of this stuff wrong, you're going to make it even worse on the patient. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, we keep we're trying to emphasize also right here: get training, know what you're doing, or get somebody to a state that you can hold them, you know, keep, keep them stable until an ambulance arrives. Okay. Or you can get an EMT to show up or serious medical help. So that's definitely something you want to watch well, out for. Yeah. yeah. In, in the sense that you can do something wrong and make it worse, doing nothing is not, um, is probably not a good option. Although, I mean, in some cases doing nothing is better than doing something in this case, um, you know, try to do your best. That's why I was saying that if you forget a step, while you're doing CPR or something, you may still save their life, and that's better than going, oh, crap, I can't remember. Or if you haven't had your training updated in years. I, I had a manager who thought that when your CPR uh, card from uh, the Red Cross, it had an expiration date. When it expired, you were no longer allowed to 
do CPR. Like, oh, so I'm just going to stand here and let this person die, <laughs> you know, because my card expired. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. You know, just engineering minds, whatever. Anyhow. Yeah. Um, okay. But, but like their hearts uh, in a different place. <laughs> yeah. Do, doing, doing, uh, doing something is better than doing nothing. Having outdated training is better than having no training at all. And, and forgetting a step uh, may, not, may not seem like, uh, um, or it may seem like it, it's, um, you, you shouldn't try, but you should still try. But, I mean, David does have a good point, though. I mean, you, there is still the chance you can hurt somebody. There are good Samaritan laws. I don't know if it's state by state or if it's nationwide, but there are good Samaritan laws that say yeah. if you render assistance to somebody and they die in the process, that you are not responsible. Um, at least I know that we've got that here in Michigan. I don't know if it's a national thing. Somebody please correct me uh, if, if, if you know anything differently. But yeah, every time I've taken the yeah, go ahead. yeah, every time I've taken the training at work, it's been don't worry, you're not going to get sued. So yeah. well, well, and the uh, other thing to consider is if, if you have this stuff, even if you still need training, and and, and I've heard this over and over again because my initial thought was. And I, I don't have much more than a boo boo kit, but my and my initial thought was I don't want to get much more than a boo boo kit until I know how to use it. But at the same time, if you have something a little more substantial that can handle some level of trauma, and, and you're not the person who use it, but someone shows up that doesn't have a tourniquet on hand, but you do, and they know how to apply it properly, that that's also a a thought. Yeah. Yeah, I've had the misfortune of having to give somebody CPR, and while I'm trying to do what I can to keep this person alive, I'm on the phone with the paramedics, and common sense goes a long way, too. I know that that's not exactly a uh, wide-ranging variety of understanding out there, but the 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 medic on the phone was telling me because I didn't remember how many like how many pushes oh, you know one two yeah. one two three, I was just going with what I thought, and the paramedic told me to start punching him in the sternum. And I, I said I said excuse me, he said ball up your fist and punch him in the sternum, and I said I'm not doing that, and I I wasn't going to just start punching my Jeez. friend in the sternum. It wasn't happening. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I just kept giving the chest compressions and maybe five minutes later, the paramedics were already here. So. Okay. There's when you do CPR, when you do CPR, you will crack the rib cage. You will. You're going to hear it crack. It's, it's you know, right. but that's okay. They can heal that. They can heal that as opposed to dying. But yeah, punching them in the sternum, I've never heard that. That's, that's you know, I've had your, your basic... Jeez. You know, high school, the paramedics come and show you what to do and yeah. a couple of small little classes throughout my life, nothing major. But I had a common sense understanding of how to do CPR and never in my lifetime would I have ever told anybody to start punching the person in their sternum. And that's Maybe what they the just kind of backed up and it was going to be a while before they could get there. So they just wanted to skip the middleman and just... Uh... But and yeah, that's, not God. Knock, <laughs> that's not a knock on EMTs in any way, shape, or form. That no, was just no. one one minor story that I had to tell. And yeah, but that's where common sense comes in. Yeah, like, yeah. You got to use your own brain. I wonder if uh, you, I've I've seen CPR demonstrations where they actually did a couple of strikes to the sternum, and I, I wonder if that has something to do with just a, a not really. Not like not like a AED shock or something, but that that shock to the area maybe makes you know sometimes yeah maybe that that's what go, it is. Oh wait, I got a pump. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I take that back. I did see Bones do that in an episode of Star Trek once, where he hit him in the. <laughs> there was one of the movies or something. No, yeah, and there's another thing. Star CBR Trek Six. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. um, the the um. The other thing, too, is modesty goes out the window as well. The surgical shears in there will cut through clothing. It'll cut through denim. It'll cut through a wire bra. It'll cut through pretty much anything. When you get AED training, which is a whole separate thing, I'm not in saying that somebody needs to put a, a several hundred or, or over thousand dollar AED in their, in their first aid kit. But when you, when you learn how to use a defibrillator, you've got to cut their clothing off. 
Right? They're already dead. You're trying to bring them back to life. Modesty goes out the window. So that's, that's another thing to consider is um, having some good surgical shears because they may be wounded and you may have to, to cut the clothes to be able to apply a bandage until uh, somebody can get there. Now, just a point here. Anybody that's listening, if you're around me and I go down, I do not need a defibrillator. I have one built in. So don't be cutting my fucking shirt off and shot. Do you have a special, do you have like a bracelet for that so people know ahead of time? Or? The AED will not shock you if you have one. It'll detect it and it will not shock you if ah. you have one built in. Okay. Okay. Well, this is good to know. It will also yeah, not shock you more times than what you need. It can tell if you uh, need a shock or if you don't. As far as, you know, has, is your heart still beating? Your pulse might be weak, but is, is it there? Or has yeah. it has your pulse restored? It'll tell you everything to do. These, the ones they've got today, now they've got a video screen on them with, with you know, images <laughs> and everything. But it'll say, you know, uh, oh, apply pads, apply pads, stand yeah. back, charging, yeah. delivering shock, check, you know. And then it'll say continue CPR. And then it might even have a rhythm thing for you to go with to do the CPR with. I mean, they're really, they're getting fancier and fancier. Uh, there's a lot of good advice popping up out here uh, over on the YouTube side for the chat. Um, chest compressions are better than nothing. Uh, there was one in here I wanted to talk about. Anybody can learn to use this gun snob. Anyone can learn to use a basic trauma kit in the afternoon with a medical with with a medic. Uh, tourniquets, chest seals, and wound packing is not as complicated as it seems. Again, just a little bit of training can go a long way. So do do think about maybe at some point getting something like this done, especially. In the wintertime, if you don't go out and do a lot of shooting, you might have some free time on the weekends or more time during the week. Get yourself set up and, and do take some EMT training if you can. Um, all right, now I want to go ahead and move on to the next little vehicle kit. So let's do another uh, screen share for this one. And again, as we go up through these kits, the prices do go up, you know, a, well, not significantly, but it depends on what you want. So I thought this one was kind of cool. This is a North American Rescue Kit. This is the Patrol Vehicle Trauma Kit, uh, 224 bucks, and they show you everything that's in it. Again, if you go through and price all this stuff individually, it's probably going to cost you about $150, $175, and then they're charging you quite a bit for the bag. But again, these are specialized bags, you know, compartments in them, and they're designed to hold everything. Um, they show you how everything organize, organizes nice and neat. But again, it doesn't do any good if you don't know how to use it. That's $224.99 for just the basic kit. So this would be a vehicle kit that you could look into if you want to go with combat guys. It jacks the price up to $274. And combat guys is usually about twenty or twenty five dollars for just a unit of it, from what I've seen on Amazon. I'm not seeing a place for a gun. Oh, you could set anything in here if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just in case they're too far gone, you want to put them out of their misery. Well, I mean, you know, it's it's it, it is it is an option. You know, I'm not saying that. You there's, know, there's, it, there's Molly yeah. on the back. It, is that an option? I, you know, it, somebody it, suggested it. Uh, a couple people suggested it in the in the chat also. So I mean, I you know, I don't like know. what would the legal shooting sure be if you? But... <laughs> What's that? I'm not sure what? I'd go there. But if you're in a bad situation already, you might want that throw down gun. Depending for... on what the person is going through, and you know they're not going to make it. I mean, if they get some serious serious kind of injury, like you know, they're in just clenching pain or something i mean obviously you know you're not going to have access to, to morphine unless you're an emt uh i'm thinking more along lines of defense i don't know if i could bring oh, myself okay. to do that okay yeah 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 <laughs> well i mean you could easily put some sort of a pocket pistol in here if you needed to you could you could there'd be room for in these little side pouches and stuff if you needed something i know they'd even talked about i don't know if it's a common practice but they had talked about having emts be armed when they go to a site to trip to assist people because of the environments that they were doing this work in i mean obviously combat medics in the military are going to have some sort of a weapon on them. I, I got a friend whose sister was a combat medic through many tours in Afghanistan, and she always had a, a Beretta. She had an M92 on her at all times uh, on a chest rig. So, I mean, you know, when these people go into these situations, uh, you might want to consider some sort of a, a small sidearm to put in there. Uh, the other one I wanted to share real quick is the SGI vehicle trauma kit. I like this one the most. This one mounts up on a headrest. And uh, it has the same kind of setup. It's not as complicated as the one I just showed you in terms of what you get with it or as thorough. This one's 140 with combat guys. Zips down. Everything you need is right there. And obviously the little red handle so you can find it. And this one goes over the, uh, the headrest on a vehicle. I mean, I've got single piece seats. So I don't know how well something like this would mount. But if you've got two piece uh, headrest in your vehicle. And this one's 140 bucks. So again, I just want to give people some ideas as to what to look for or give you some ideas as to what you can buy and be creative and just make your own and save, you know, 40 or $50. What do you guys think about something like this? Did you ever consider picking up something like this? I mean, this is 140 complete for the whole thing. 
I don't think I could buy that. No. <laughs> I I, I I mean, you can buy all the same equipment, you know, uh, much cheaper. You can hop on eBay and Amazon and a lot of these places. There are whole sites devoted to selling medical supplies. Um, you can probably find a lot of stuff locally, depending on where you live. If you have a medical supply store local to you and spend probably less than half that for yeah. all the same stuff. I mean, really, the benefit of that is it's, you know, handy dandy little bag that attaches to the back of the thing. But. I mean, if you really want to do that, I bet you you could figure out a way to get an extra large fanny pack to do the same thing or something. Well, here's the funny you part. Know? When you read the read the one-star reviews on these things, a lot of people say, look, man, it's overpriced for what you get. You can buy everything separate and save the money. Go buy any other bag you could make do with it or just get some sort of like a field bag and just adjust it so it works for you. Um, you know, there's a lot of – you have a lot of options where you don't have to throw down $89 for the bag itself, you know. Oh, that, you're that probably one? not going to yeah. spend 25 bucks on it either. It's it's not going to be yeah. when, super when, cheap. When you renew your NRA membership, you get that free bag. That'll work. You could get a little Tupperware, or like not Tupperware, but like little plastic boxes to separate everything and have everything in its own little compartments. Also, if you can pick them up cheap, sometimes you find these like at garage sales or just around. Um, a camera lens bag has like nine divided compartments in it. You could put everything in there. And it has a flap that goes over the top. I actually use one to put all my ear pro and eye pro in, but I've taken out the dividers. But it has nine like foam padded dividers that Velcro in. You got nine compartments that are all about the size of uh, just like a box where you put a standard camera lens in it for like an SLR. And you could divide stuff up that way because that's what a lot of these bags have is like a little divider system built into it. Um, so again, yeah, look at the item list and go price those things separately and put it together. Worst case, you know, just put it in a box and just have it all together just sitting in there. Then obviously go get the training that you need because again they're they're going to sell you these items and they really do start to get up in price um you know when you go that route and then the other question that the viewer had is you know what about for a home trauma kit what should i do for a home trauma kit well i guess it kind of depends on on what's going to happen it depends on how far you are from the hospital it may determine what you're going to need how dangerous is the environment that your home is like do you have any kind of outside threats you'd have to worry about so i wanted to share one more and this is kind of the uh, the be it all, end it all. And again, when I read the one-star reviews, it was the same situation. Uh, they said a bit overpriced for what you get, but let's go back here. This is kind of the big mamma jamma. This is the $309 Lightning X Premium Stocked Modular EMS EMT Trauma Kit First Aid Responder Medical Bag. So it gets four stars on five reviews. Uh, you can get it in orange or navy blue. And this thing has got everything in it, but... There is a listing in the Q&A. Somebody said, well, I want to know what's in it. I want to know what I'm going to get and what it doesn't have. And the company did list every single item that's in here. Now, the one complaint about this is you get this bag, but they don't, they just stuff everything in there. You have to go take everything apart and set it all up and put stuff where you want it. And they said, it's really a, really a pain. It doesn't come pre-stocked for $309. It should come ready to go where it's right out of the box. You know, Are it's you all kidding? set, but this has everything in there, man. Tony, what's up? I said, are you kidding? Uh, kidding about what? People would be happy that the way they set it up. People wanted it, so it's ready to go right out of the box. They didn't have to go through and separate everything and find then compartments to put bitch, it in. Then they would bitch because it wasn't set up the way they wanted it. Well, this is true. And I'm, again, I'm just talking about the one-star ratings for something like this. You know, what is it that that dings? Why is it not five stars? Because, I mean, it's a, it's a fairly, you know, it's a fairly widespread of items here that you're going to get. But yeah, no, Tony, people complain about anything, man. I mean, you never know. They could say, I don't like the, one guy complained about the zippers not being durable enough. It's like, well, how many times are you going to open this thing? You know, I mean, maybe this was not intended to be a daily ambulance med kit, you know? So, but again, that, if you want to go all out, just look at the items listed on that bag and then adapt that for your home use. You know, something that you could just have in a plastic box with everything in there, pop the lid off and you have access to everything. I would say go that route. Because you might save a hundred dollars versus buying that bag, then that company does not sell the bag by itself. But that was just one of the options for. Again, to me, it's getting the items, like getting the list of items, so you know specifically what you need, or go talk to an EMT if you know an EMT, and then obviously getting yourself the training. I mean, that would be the one thing that I would definitely recommend. So now, Matt, okay, so you show that bag off right there. Do you have anything more extensive for the home, or is that basically your your home bag? Yeah, no, I've got to, uh, and I have to run to the other side of the house and get it. But no, I've got the. Um, uh, I went and bought a tackle box, oh. um, which I think is a good option uh, sure, for, sure. for a med kit because it's got all the spaces you need. Mm -hmm. um, and they're usually a lot cheaper 
It's a lot cheaper to go to uh, Walmart and buy a tackle box than to buy like that that bag you showed right there yeah. that has all the pockets. And the, you know, to buy even a, a cheap one of those is probably fifty bucks, give oh, or yeah. take, yeah. at least yeah. Yeah. Uh, for those bags. Tackle box can accomplish the same thing. Um, and I've just got stuffed with all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's I just I've got two of them. I got one in my my vehicle. That's what I have in my vehicle. I got one okay. for the house, and it's got all the stuff, all the the gauze and the tourniquet, and um, it's got everything from first aid to uh, trauma, to a headache, to gloves, to that's where I, I've got my, uh, I got uh, more sutures, uh, staple kit, um, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the shears, the scissors, whatever the freaking trauma shears, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. just, you know, everything I could pack, even, even some stuff in there that, you know, I, I've got, um, you know, antibiotics, for instance, you know, stuff that I've, you know, if I've, Got sick and doctor gave me antibiotics and I just I didn't take it because don't want to mess with that. But oh, yeah, um, yeah. you know, extra stuff like that. Just basically anything, you know. Again, you know, Tylenol, simple stuff. It, you know, you never know when something's going to happen, and you know, it, trauma may not always just be you've got a gaping wound in your side or something. But uh, yeah, I, I I like to put a kit together like that and just keep it stocked with anything that might be useful at some point. That's not a real trauma kit, though. That's more of a medical kit. I mean, yeah, yeah, no, it is. It, it's got, it's got all, it's got everything in there for it. It's got a trauma in it. Yeah, you know, it's got all the stuff I would need for a trauma kit in it. It's also got a lot of other stuff as well. It's, it's overblown. <laughs> now, for me, when I worked for the government, my first year of the gig was going into a building that wasn't finished. There's no people working in it except for the construction. And our first aid training was all about using what was there. Yeah. No first aid kit stuff. So, you know, it was like for large wounds, you go to the bathroom and you grab maxi pads. Uh, smaller wounds, mini pads, you know, because they provided both. Uh, and it, it it's all about stuff like that, you know, using what you can get your hands on. Yeah. So I really don't even look at these trauma kids because I would have to go through a little different training set than I've already been through. And I don't like that. Okay. Uh, another thing that somebody pointed out, Fine Eight pointed this one out on the gun channel side. He goes, a headlamp. There's no headlamps in any. He goes, I see no lighting whatsoever. Well, one of them had a little pen light and that was it, but a nice inexpensive either rechargeable or just battery operated, either clip on headlamp or some, cause you might be working in a dark situation. If you got to go take a bag out to somebody in the field, you don't have a flashlight or you don't no, have an easy I, way to project light. You know, yeah, I keep a headlamp in my, my vehicle. Cause I, what I've got in the back for everybody that's well, I've redone it so many times, but I've done a video on it before. I've got a tote, a vehicle tote in the back of my suburban and inside that tote, I've got the, the kit that I've got. And then right next to that, I've got another kit, which right on the top of that is a headlamp. So as yeah. soon as I open that up, I can I can grab the headlamp and there's a flashlight and a pocket knife and all kinds of other stuff clipped to the outside of that bag, um, and the the kit that I've got in there, the med kit and trauma kit, and and do the same thing because that that is you know you, that is a good point. You do want to keep that. Um, one thing that I did do for just a medical kit for the house is you know I was pricing them up at Walmart and a decent home medical kit's around twenty bucks. And uh, I remember watching a video on a Patriot Nurses Channel. About a couple months before, she went to Dollar Tree and showed off all the medical supplies you can get for a buck at Dollar Tree. And, and a lot of it's the same brands that you're going to buy at Walmart. So what we did was we just wrote down all the items that you get in that home medical kit from Walmart. And then we went to Dollar Tree and spent the same amount of money. And we got the exact same items all the way across, except we got more because everything's a buck. So instead of having like four little Imodium caplets, you get a package of 10. Instead of getting five bandages, you get a box of 20. So we've got a nice big med kit. And we spent a little over 20 bucks on it. There's a few things I left out of it because we have other stuff in the house. But I mean, there's it for just primary wounds you might get around the house working outside or stings or bites or whatever. Um, you can put together a pretty good. So don't rule out the Dollar Tree is amazing for stuff like that. You can get all kinds of goodies there. Hot something packs and cold there. packs and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Something else there that's important to think about is the fact that the odds of you running into a major gunshot wound as opposed to a cut on your child's finger or something. Yeah. You know, if you want a med kit, you know, be sure you have the stuff to take care of the little boo-boos. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of these don't include just 
band-aids you know and so that's you know that's kind of why i have i do like the little pre-made vehicle kits i i did buy one at walmart a couple of years ago and since then i put my own together but they got everything in there you got the disinfectant you got the tape the gauze you got the little compression patches you've got uh band-aids gloves a little first aid kit card some of the basic you know aspirin tylenol uh you know whatever i mean th those little things are good to have too because you don't know if you're going to run in because me I probably just have minor cuts more than anything, just working on stuff around the house or working on the vehicle. That'd be the main thing. You know, stings happen once in a while. We have a lot of wasps and hornets out here too, unfortunately. Um, and, and so things like that can happen to you. I would also say more important than the damn kid is the training. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, definitely. And that's, that's the one thing we keep wanting to emphasize on this is get out there and, you know, get, get some training. I'm going to, like I said, ask that our, that our district offers some sort of trauma, tra some trauma training. And I need myself to really get on the ball just so I can maybe help somebody, somebody, something happens. And again, part of it happens from the fact that we have a lot of people out at our range and for, for, you know, for big shooting days, they have onsite medical there. But it, when it's just myself and maybe 20, 30 other people out at the range, again, it's 15 minutes. A lot of stuff can happen in 15 minutes. That's, you know, somebody has a heart attack or somebody collapses or somebody has an allergic reaction or something, you know, uh, things like that. Then on, okay, now things like EpiPens, I'm, I'm assuming like an EpiPen, you'd have to have a prescription for that. I know our building has them, but they're trained individuals that, that use them if they need to on people that are having some sort of a shock or some sort of an allergic reaction. But uh, oh, aspirin yeah. might be a good one to have if somebody is having a heart attack or whatnot to thin out their blood. Yeah, and, uh, you could have some low dose aspirin uh, until, until they get person to the hospital. I mean, they say in the TV commercials that it helps. Uh, another thing to consider is some little bottles of saline solution. Mm -hmm. Or if you're somewhere where there's bottled water, that you can use that. But uh, to flush out uh, chemicals or something else that got into somebody's eye. Uh, can I ask you a question? No. Yeah. For, for people who have taken the training from the military training with Squib to you know, civilian first aid training with the fire department and any of the training, is there any talk about the psychological training? Like panic, you know, uh, a lot you know, of people you, panic. How do you somebody down? How do you get them to just not move, you know? How, no, how do you keep yourself from panicking? I, I'm not, I'm not, you know, a superhero. So I'm quick to admit that if, a, some, if I'm at the gun range and somebody starts firing, the first thing I'm going to do is panic. And have to catch myself under control and get myself under control. So Being methodical and counting steps is the one thing that they told us about how to get through a situation. The reason the reason I bring it up is because most people, if something traumatic happens, they're going to panic first. Yeah. And if it's a if it's a large crowd of people, then you've got a large crowd of people panicking. So it, I think it's uh, in your nature to do that, what you need to do is recognize that you're panicking, get control of your breathing, get your head out of your butt and realize that you're no good to your buddy or to yourself or to your family member or whoever the heck it is that you're either trying to defend or you're trying to save if you're a rep. It's the same sort of feeling you get if you're in a firefight. OK, if you're, you're scared, crapless, you don't want to die. You, I mean, it's just. But you're no good to the people around you if you're just freaking out and panicking. So this person is counting on you to save their life, and you may or may not save their life, but you have to try. And if you don't, because you're panicking, you're no good to them. And you're going to live with that the rest of your life more so than you are, you know, I, I got blood all over me or I was scared. Uh, so, you know, it kind of goes back to the whole, if you can't handle it, um, maybe this isn't something you should be looking into. But you just you catch yourself panicking and you go, OK, stop, <clears throat> slow down your breathing, start looking around, get, be aware of your surroundings and, and then, all right, assess the situation. What do I got to do? Go back to your training. I mean, there's just a lot of things you have to mentally yeah. do. And if you can't do that, you're probably not going to do very good in a gun battle either. <laughs> Go yeah, back to your training you. is huge, man. I mean, because that's why you need to train for these things. You need to get your mindset. So so what you need to do is going to be automatic in your mind. And that takes over, not, oh, my God, this person's bleeding out. They're going to die. But, okay, let's – what do we got? What do we need to do? 
Jim, go ahead. I'm sorry, man. Hey, I was I was going to say yeah. something along the same lines. It's kind of like a gunfight. If you're if you've trained for the stressful situation, especially if the training includes some level of stress, you're going to once you've mastered or at least reasonably mastered a certain level of whatever first aid, trauma training, gunfighting, whatever, you're going to default that when the, the adrenaline's going. You're not going to... And, and don't be surprised, too, if afterward you start yeah. to process and that's where it really hits you. This yeah. person died in my arms, or I saved this person's life, or I almost died today, or whatever it is. Sometimes it's you deal with it and then you process it later. And I, I know that sounds really cold, but sometimes in a life or death situation, that's what you've got to do, and you just deal with it later. I think that's what they were pointing at when they were telling us to be methodical. You know, you assess the situation to see that it's safe for you to go into. Then you assess the people who were injured. There's one or more. Yeah. Then you assess the injuries to determine which you need to go to first mm -hmm. and it was like you know you go through a checklist well you know you're not panicking because you know your mind's trying to do this other thing uh and it worked well for me i mean i've been come up on car wrecks where uh you've had issues like that and it don't bother me none uh well, but you know, which is age and experience and, you know, age and experience, and they have a lot to do with it, too. When you encounter these things more than once, you're used to dealing. It's like it's like with any kind of a, working on the job or any kind of life experience you have. If you've been through it enough, it doesn't it doesn't uh, phase you like it used to. You know, that's something that you might run into, whether you're talking about combat or some sort of a job that you might do where you, now, you know. Yeah. One of the funny things is my training. I got all my training from 88 to 92 when AIDS was uh, pretty good. So, yeah, you know, there was a lot put into it about not touching bodily fluids, which is, I don't know, it, it kind of took away from what I learned because of the, you know, you can't really get in there and do what you need to do. If somebody's got a serious friggin' wound and not get their blood on you. Right, and you can mitigate that if you have a little bit of PPE in there with the, the nitrile gloves and maybe a face shield or whatever, but also you got to decide if you have time to use all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, and that's another thing. When you're doing CPR, the person may throw up on you, in your mouth. It's disgusting, but, you know, it's it's something that happens. You know, when you're doing CPR, um, it's, you know, if they got cigarette breath or coffee breath or whatever it is, you're going to be right there in your face. You know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of sick things that you have to deal with. That's why I say just do it and think about it later. Yeah. Because if you stop to think about it, you can be like, ew, gross or whatever. And if, you're not going to do the right thing. It's not an easy thing to do. It just, it isn't an easy thing to deal with. And some people just can't, can't put their feelings on hold and then process yeah. their feelings later. But, yeah. you know, if you, you have the to... equipment that helps, it's going to take some of the stress off you, but just don't have the equipment if you don't know how yeah. to use it. If you're one of those people who can't do that, I mean, just stay out of the way. Yeah. Make the phone call and, and just help keep the person calm until, until the, the medics can arrive. You know, if that's all you can do, then it's better than nothing. Um, all right, so hopefully, hopefully we've addressed the topic in its entirety. We, we've helped people out, give them some good ideas, some suggestions, everything from how to deal with what you got to do to what you need to make it work and so on. So we're going to shift on over to topic number two. And again, this was another, uh, another. I'm not saying this is good or bad. This is just a viewer question. Is 45 ACP and 40 Smith & Wesson still a relevant round? Is it something well, that you should still think about investing in? Is it worth it? You're going to give up capacity, but at the same time, are you going to, is the added power or takedown power worth it versus capacity? What do you guys think on this one? 45 ACP and 40 Smith. Go ahead, Tony. Is it still relevant? Hell yes. It'll poke a hole in a bad guy. Okay. okay. So why all the hate for 45 and 40? What, what, what's with all the hate for these two calibers? I mean, they're good enough for the military. They're good enough for, for me, it's government agencies. You know, off. What's that? For me, it's just to piss people off. 
Ah, okay. I got okay. nothing against 40 or 45. Uh, some of it is just good nature driven, and I shoot forty, so I I, I, okay. I take crap from people all the time. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, you 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 are they? Is it gonna be used less? More, probably so with forty. Probably not so much with forty five. It's probably where it forty five has its fans, and people are gonna use it no matter what else anybody says. Uh, obviously, nine's the the you know, I mean, you can't you can't argue with the fact that 40 is a more powerful round than nine millimeters. So sure, you've got the increased, uh, you know, capacity of running a nine two two pistols. Okay, ident identical model, but say one's chambered in nine and one's chambered in 40. You might have a three or four round advantage over the nine millimeter, but 40 might be the more powerful round. I'm looking at the ballistics figures right now. And I'm going to share this with the uh, and everybody watching on the the gun channel side and the YouTube side. So I've got you know let's just go and bring this up real quick. Uh, this is the uh, Hornaday. Hornady, I always call it Hornady. Hornady ballistics uh, chart, which I really enjoy because it shows all the ammo that they make and it shows, you know, what the what the velocity is. And they tell you what the barrel length is that they test the gun out of and the energy. And I mean, Morty Smith does have around, you know, 30 to 20 to 30 more foot pounds of, uh, of, of energy to it out of the muzzle. So, I mean, I think it's definitely something to, to consider. I mean, I had a 40 caliber Stoger cougar handgun i mean i thought it was great and i mean i've seen what that stuff does to ballistics gelatin with the spear gold dot and i wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of it and i mean you know even the 45 auto it's still a potent enough round i think it's going to do the job i mean you can get xdp and ftx and flex shock and and uh critical defense versions of it i'm sure that you can get around that's going to do say a one to two shot you know center mass drop on most bad guys i don't think it's anything to really worry about but you know, the one thing I will say about the 40 Smith & Wesson pistols, you, you do find some fantastic deals on them out there. Many times they're going to be a lot cheaper, $50 to $100 cheaper than a, than a you know. You look at a lot of these uh, LEO trade-in Smith & Wesson 40s that are showing up, or 40, 40 Smith uh, Glocks. You know, you can pick them up for $100 less than than the 9mm equivalent. So, yeah, but on the flip side of that, the round, the, the, the practice rounds are probably a few cents, you know, three to four or five cents around more. I'm seeing about four to five dollars more for a box of fifty on just forty Smith and Wesson ball ammo versus nine. Um, so I think you're good. But then again, you know, you also might start to see some surplus of forty showing up because so many agencies have switched back to nine that maybe you're going to see some good deals popping up in the next couple of years on forty Smith. Well, you gotta, um, Jim, what do you usually pay for a box of forty? I say fifteen dollars at Walmart. But oh gosh, I I don't even do that. I go to LAX Ammo or SG uh -huh. Ammo and buy a thousand rounds and, and okay. And be done with it and then it's the, the 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 price difference between 40 and 9 for places like that start to shrink some okay but it's 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 not it you know it it it's more expensive to shoot at the end of the day mm -hmm. all right you know as far as talking the power thing i don't really care about that i mean because well, they're both perfectly I effective care, yeah t-shirt whether i carry a nine millimeter smith and then jackie weather I carry a 629. Uh, you know, so capacity, uh, all that shit doesn't matter to me. Okay. And which is why I was saying that, you know, the, the 40, 45 ACP is relevant still. You know, sure, because sure. It pokes holes in people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that it's definitely going to work. And, you know, you say, well, you only got eight rounds of this, or eight rounds of that. But yeah, but with the right ammunition and enough practice and the right shot placement, again, I don't think it's really going to be that big of a deal. Uh, Matt, you said you do have a, a 40. And one thing we've talked about before, one thing you've mentioned before is, you know, anytime we have these ammo scares, it seems like the 40 Smith is always on the shelves, regardless of what, what people are buying. They might be out of nine. They might be out of 380 and 22, but you're always going to find 40. That or 44 mag and seven millimeter Remington Magnum. Those are always on the shelf. I've been through three ammo scares now, and that's always there. You can always get it. It doesn't sell out. You know, yep. is that is that one of the reasons why you bought the bought a forty? Is it your? That is the only reason I bought a forty. What is your forty cal? Is it the is it the Taurus PT8? It's not. It's the Smith and Wesson MP. Oh, MP and forty. Okay. Yeah, okay. Full size MP forty. Um, I've owned forty in the past. I don't. I got. I don't have a problem with it. Um, I like it. It's a good round. It's a powerful round. It's a good round to carry. It's uh, obviously a step up when it comes to hard barrier penetration, which is why 40 exists let's be honest here it was it was because 
of law enforcement needing to do things like shoot through windshields, and they wanted something that would more reliably do it than nine millimeter would, uh, especially at the time, uh, which was you know back in the eighties. Doesn't it go back to the whole Miami Dade shootout or whatever? It was? Well, I mean, was it, the it, reason 40 why was they, forty yeah. was in forty was already a thing before oh, then. Okay. Um, but I mean, forty got its start back in the in the eighties, and is all you know. There was a whole 10 millimeter thing and there's a lot to it, but um, I mean, th there's no denying 40 is a, is a superior round for specifically that um, the, the difference in, in uh, capacity versus power, all that kind of stuff. Be, people can argue about that till they're blue in the face. Both rounds are good. Both rounds um, will effectively defend a person. One just has a, a slight advantage. Um, well, not a slight, a decent advantage when it comes to one specific task. Um, and there's nothing wrong with, with that that's that's a, that's a good thing um but i mean for me i you know I, I made a decision a long time ago that you know what i was going to stock up on and what i was going to mainly shoot um between those two rounds was going to be nine millimeter because uh, i like the the added capacity just me personally mm -hmm. um but yeah I, I when we had that ammo shortage back in uh late 12 early 13 i decided same just like you 40 was everywhere Nobody was buying forty off the shelves. I mean, you know, yeah, maybe some, um, but and really expensive. You know, three fifty seven yeah. mag was always on the shelf too. Yeah, and and so I said, you know what, I need at least one forty back in my collection because um, I'd got rid of all mine at that point. Mm -hmm. I think I think I'd got rid of the forties I had. I start I started buying the first forty I bought was probably back in oh four oh three oh four, and then I, I kept I had a couple of them that I kept around, and then I ended up selling them off back in right before actually right before I started doing YouTube back in like uh, late two thousand nine early two thousand ten. I got rid of them, and then you know, a couple years later, it's like, nah, I need to keep this in my collection because it's it's yeah. good to have something, you know, that you can always get get ammo for. Um, as far as like the forty five and stuff goes, I mean, I think forty five that, that's just an American round. It's going to be around for a long time. It's my favorite handgun round, um, capacity wise. You know, it's not <laughs> great if you like a lot of capacity, obviously, but I think it's a fantastic round. Big slow moving bullet, not always the best thing in the world, probably in every situation, but uh, I like it. Um, I don't get too much into the ballistics of it. Uh, you know, it, 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 let's be honest, nine, 40, 45, shoot somebody's center mass a couple times. You're going to stop them. I mean, you know, it, with all these rounds, especially with modern, modern ammunition. Um, I do think one thing, and I've talked about this before, I think out of all these rounds that we're talking about here, um, 40 is the one that has the highest likelihood of disappearing someday. 40 is the one that, you know, because sometimes rounds come and go, you know, or not just not disappearing, but just, you know, there's a reason why there's not too many guns out there anymore. That You're going to find one brand and one variety of Walmart. You're not going to find yeah. 10 or 15 like you do yeah. nine. Or exactly. three, eight, you know, like, 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 like yeah. 32 Smith and Wesson. I mean, it's still out there. Occasionally somebody makes a gun chambered in it, but it's not, it's not like there was a, t there was a period in time where 32 was actually pretty popular. You know, they were a lot. They're making a lot of guns. A lot of people had guns in thirty-two. It's just not that 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 way anymore. Um, I don't think nine and forty-five are are going anywhere, ever. As long as we have until we get to phasers, uh, <laughs> nine and forty-five are going to be around. As long as we're still lobbing lead at people, um, those two calibers are going to be around. I think forty is the one that someday. Who knows? And maybe it won't, but it has the highest likelihood of being that gun. That oh wow, you you have a forty? Oh, where do you get ammo for that? You know that kind of thing. That yeah. may be fifty years from now. I don't know, <laughs> but. Yeah, hopefully I'll phasers by then. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. You know, if anybody's worried about capacity, you know, you've always got the double stack option for the 1911s or go with the 10 millimeter 1911 if you want that sort of form factor in a gun. Get a, you know. Yeah, you just get a Glock 21 yeah. or sure. that, an FN, FN, FN 45 exactly. tactical, preferably. There you go. You know, I think it would be a smart idea to at least have a 40 Smith pistol around. Maybe go get an SD40 if you don't want to spend a lot of money on it. Um, Pick up something where you know you can, and then just have a couple boxes because it's a good go-to, and it's typically always on the shelves. And get up, please uh, trade in Glock it, twenty-two, man. Oh it's, man, they're, it's they're much wide. better, and it's not much more expensive. I, I'm seeing those with two ninety-nine, three forty-nine over on Classic. I've seen oh, trade -ins? I've yeah. seen the forty, the forty trade-ins on forty cal trade-ins on the. Uh, and you want to save another Smith 50, and, 75 bucks? Get the M and P forty, please trade. Yeah. Two ninety nine. You know, you're only getting a one mag, and but you might have nine sites that comes with it. Yeah. Really, really read reviews, read new reviews on those because when they first get those in, I think you're going to get the pick of the litter at that point. Because as I'm reading more of the Star Model B reviews now and these police trading reviews, and once one's been up on a certain website for a while, you start to read the newer reviews and like, okay, I got this one. It was heavily pitted. It was scratched. It was beat up. If anything, I would rather say buy an Leo trade in locally if you can, or maybe at a gun show. Because you have it in front of you, you know what you're getting. It might not need a lot of refurbishing to bring it back up to a reliable status, you know. 
Um, but I mean, yeah, you can get some great ideas. I've seen sub three hundred dollar police trade ins for forty. And now for forty five, you know, you're going to spend a little more money depending on what gun you go with, what type of gun you. Go. If you want the nineteen eleven style or more, you know, like it's traditional, not traditional, but something more like along the lines of a Glock or whatnot. Uh, you know, you're going to spend a little bit more money for that. So my answer to the question, is it still relevant? Of course, I think there's still relevant rounds. Like you said, now, with modern ammunition, I'm looking at the ballistics on some of those plus P rounds and some of those critical defense and critical duty rounds. I think you're going to be okay. Um, again, yeah, you're going to give up some capacity. Or, you know, if you want to give up capacity and you don't mind spending the money, consider going with the 357 SIG. Because then I believe you also have the option to go with 40 if you just go with a barrel swap, maybe. Is that what the deal is? Isn't that how it works? 357 SIG and 40, you can do a barrel swap yeah. and you're good to go. Sometimes maybe a maybe a guide rod spring because you can still use the uh, the magazine. So Sandhills, what's your take on this, man? What do you think? I was gonna gonna bug you about this. What do you think, Sandhills? You're still there? Yeah. Yeah, I'm still here. Okay. Uh, okay. Sorry, I just been no, no. Have you ever considered forty or forty five at all in, in a home defense a, handgun, or you ever dabbled with it? Yeah. No, I had a forty once a long time ago before I really even knew much about handguns. Um, I had a, a Taurus uh, PT twenty four seven. And that was in 40 and it was cool. I mean, I just took it out and clinked with it a few times and then sold the thing. I didn't really care for it that much. Um, but uh, no, I think they're still relevant. The reason that I say that is because not everybody likes nine millimeter. Not everybody likes 357 or 38. Not everybody likes 380. And so just like not everybody wants to shoot an M&P or not everybody wants to shoot a Glock or not everybody wants to shoot a 1911, you know, the, the range of calibers that are considered normal, you know, your, your typical EDC calibers, mm -hmm. I mean, 389, 40, 45. Um, and if it's a revolver 38 or 357, um, you know, anything besides those is, is I think drastically uh, less common, but uh, just for that reason, the fact that some guys want, you know, nine millimeter, you've got more capacity. Some guys want 45 because, you know, slow and fat sometimes does get the job done. Um, some guys want that, uh, that middle ground where, um, you know, higher velocity, but, but higher capacity. And I think 40 is a great compromise. I think 45 is a great caliber. If that's what you like, then cool. You know, I, I don't shame any caliber. So yeah, well, a lot of the guys yeah. shame 40 simply because it's not 10. <laughs> well that but but that's like shaving 380 because it's not nine by 19 you know it's never ending it's just a big piece it's not even that big of a difference <laughs> <laughs> well still but i mean it, it's just you know why that's like saying well you know you, you you suck because you carry your lcr in 38 and and mine's a 357 i mean yeah. yeah there's a lot of guys that shame a lot of other guys no matter what it is uh just because you know the guys doing the shaming typically have a small penis and that's what they can. <laughs> no, uh, it all, it's all the first time that word's ever been used on this podcast. <laughs> I don't think we've ever ever used that one before. So, but I mean, it's within the right context. So, yeah, go on. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to get you a channel strike for that. No, uh, really, though, what it comes down to is honestly, if you're shaming somebody, you really do need to look and see if you're secure with what you know you, your your life or whatever. Um, I that that's one of the things that fires me up faster than anything else on a on a chat board or comment board or something like that is when somebody's shaming somebody else and and i know um i think like, matt said this before and, and i know a few other people have too you know that might be the first time they've ever talked to anybody from from the gun world and if if they go on the first time into a chat room or message board something like that and just get some opinions and then they just get attacked you've pretty well made sure that that is one fewer gun owner. So yeah. keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah. How dare you buy that high point? Right. Exactly. Yeah. I know God forbid you want to, you want to be part of us, you know? Yeah. And then, you uh, know, whoever bought that high point, maybe they had to save six months just to buy it. You know, I mean, you yeah. don't know. So just tell them, Hey, you know, great job. Here's what I have. Here's why I like it. And if you're happy, I'm happy for you. So here's the deal. If you're curious about 45 or 40, go get yourself a 45 high point or a 40 Smith high point pistol and try them out and see what you think. You can always resell them and get most of your money back. Now, I think Matt found the ultimate deal right here over on Aim Surplus. That caught my attention. Oh, yeah. We got a. Look at that. What was that? Go back. for 299 Please trade in. 
So you're looking at probably 25 bucks for an FFL transfer, possibly mm-hmm. shipping. So 325. Yep. So put yourself a fresh guide rod spring in there, clean it up a little bit. Can you lock the feed onto Matt right now, Travis? So it is. It should be. Looking. Matt, is it locked on you right now? I, I have Matt. Uh, right no, I can't see. I'm looking at this. So you, you but, keep uh, popping up when you talk. <clears throat> uh, present but, uh, this one. So yes. we got that. Oh, there you go. All right, cool. Check it so out. So there was that one. There was this one. So for sixty nine right. bucks more, you could have one in forty five, if you want. Um, By the way, if this chat would happen to stop right now, it's because we're showing you gun websites. <laughs> just, just for, I mean, I'm expecting everything just to go black. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then, if you, if you, I mean, in a situation like this, I would obviously recommend the Glock just because more accessories, magazines, parts, and stuff like oh, sure, that. But sure, if, you, sure. if you like M and P for the same price over on uh, Classic, um, you know, two ninety nine. See, I typed in LEO trade and it only showed me five, but it didn't show anything in stock. So that's that's one right there. Yeah. Yeah. So and really again, do those were supposedly like very good to excellent condition or good to very good? Oh um, yeah. Yeah. You know, here's the here's the one thing to remember though. I. Well, classic, you you read the reviews, and it is hit or miss Tuesday nights at 9 o'clock. Some guys get one, and it's just awesome. And then you read the next review, and the guy's like, this one's been dunked in coffee, and it's covered in sprinkles, and it's it's beat to crap. It looks like it's been drugged down an interstate, you know. I guess maybe at that point, if you're not – look at it before you take it home. Really definitely get a good look at it in case you need to return it for an exchange because you might not be happy with the condition you're getting. But understand, use could mean it was just a, a duty-issued weapon with some holster wear. Or it could have been the uh, the academy trading gun, and it's got the crap shot out of it. You know, I like they got the night sights on here. You can see at least yeah. all these nice Glock size. Leo trade ins seem to have night sights. Yeah, that's pretty much the standard now. Whether some people, or not some people hate those, but yeah, you can always put yourself just a standard set of metal sights on there too for what twenty five dollars. Yeah. Just the Glock metal sight. I, I just got polymer sights on mine, but actually, I, got, I mean, I like I like the rears. They they work well. I like the nice solid steel rear sight as opposed mm-hmm. to what usually comes on a Glock. So that's a nice upgrade. I couldn't care about. Care about that? I, I usually, I mean, whether it's got the the dots glow or not, I don't care because I usually like the blacked out rear sights anyway. In the front, if you don't want to mess with it, I mean, you can replace it if you want. If you sure, don't like sure. it, just a little white nail polish and re- redo the dot and be done with it. If you don't want to spend a lot of money, on well, you, we're we we're seeing those the forty fives, the the forty five ACP Glocks were two ninety nine. Also, uh, no, these are three sixty nine. So about seventy oh. bucks more for twenty one, as opposed so, to a oh, that's oh, I thought I saw two ninety nine somewhere. No, oh God, I wish. <laughs> Yeah. No, last, de- last December, I had gotten a, a package with a Glock 22 and six mags, actually, for three ninety nine. Nice. Like, hell yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, some awesome deals out there. So, you know, if you want to get the round and you don't want to spend a lot of money, but you want to see, maybe try, you know, test the waters with it a little bit, you got a lot of options. So let me, let me ask everybody on the panel this, and, and I don't.